And now a message from our sponsor. Hey everybody, it's Bootleg Captain, Captain Bootlegs here. If you're like me, I bet you're enjoying this Toys on Tap podcast. I am enjoying it, it's very nice. But did you know you can enjoy it more just by joining that Patreon? Oh, I did not know that. There are so many cool perks available on the Patreon for you. There's and also and and wow, that's really a lot of stuff if you ask Bootleg Captain. Captain I don't bootleg. understand, there were noises I couldn't hear with the perks. So join today to support Toys on Tap podcast and Bootleg Art Toys. But if you're not in a position to join the Patreon, head on over to Apple iTunes and review and subscribe. That helps out the channel as well. Okay, I'll go rate it, I guess. And remember, listen to Toys, Toys on Tap. Tap. Captain Bootleg, the bootleg captain sent you. Why did he keep referring to himself in the third Can person? I stop with the stupid voice now? I'm not sure why you made me want to sound like a pirate. Oh, so that was a fake voice. Oh, yucko! I, was doing. I didn't realize it was just a pretend voice. Oh. Hello there. My name is Aaron Mendelson. I am the Gula Gaba. <laughs> there we go. Gula Gaba is on Toys on Tap. So we'll yeah. start out with easy, simple stuff. And then we're going to get deeper and deeper how we do. So <laughs> we have seen you pop up from what, early 2020? Um, My first cast was December 30th of 2020. Okay. So December yeah. 30th, you come around and all of a sudden don't start like most of us where you're like slightly just going in. You hit it hard and like you're Oh no, no, no. I mean you there for was sure there, do. Well, there was there was a couple of weeks where I was just casting figures or whatever, but I guess I don't know. You know what? I, I, I it might just be because I like yeah, like I had a, I had a concept for an actual piece. Like, you okay. know, I came into it thinking I, I wanted to make a piece. Like because, you know, I'm I look at this as pop art. Like I came into this seeing Suck Lord and being like, you know, he's a legitimate pop artist. And I'm yeah. fuck. Like I, I, I was just looking for anywhere, any way to be seen as a legitimate artist. And you know, I'm doing fine arts and life drawing, and no one's buying any of it. And like I'm moderating classes at this place called the Art Students League, and um, which is a really amazing place. I don't know if anyone is in New York City. Um, it's on 57th and 7th. It's called the Art Students League. It used to be an old um, associate's degree college, but now it's essentially a place for um, like working artists, like successful working artists to then yeah. teach people who are trying to be working successful yeah. artists. So essentially what you do is you'll sign up for a class. And, you know, there might be a waiting list if it's a, you know, an artist who's more sought after or not. Um, yeah. And for the most part, it's, um, it's a huge warehouse studio and on the left are going to be short mod, uh, short poses. And on the right is going to be your long poses that'll last like two weeks, like a dude in the same pose the whole time. So you can like yeah. really, you know, get it going or you get your warm ups on the left. So you get like, you know, your, your, your 30 seconds and then they move on to like two and then five. And then you kind of then eventually like 20 minute poses to, you know, just kind of loosen yourself up. And that was what I was doing. That, that, that was kind of my whole like art scene. And it was just, it, it's such a, it's so hard when everyone is doing the same thing and when everyone is doing essentially the same pose, you really, it's, it's, it's so competitive. It's yeah. just so like, you can really see why someone's piece is better than someone else's. And like, you start getting down and like, it really becomes this like work up. And, um, I, <laughs> so yeah, so that, 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 that was my background. And then, um, you know what it was is a buddy of mine from the new school. Um, cause I was, I, I originally went to UArts in Philly for, um, a semester until I, uh, I got arrested for selling weed to an undercover cop. Um, and then I, I like, it's my lawyer is part of like my, um, uh, so I, 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 I didn't really like, I got arrested for like, it doesn't matter, but, um, part of my like, you know, probation thing was that I was going to live back in New York. Um, and I was going to come to Philly to get drug tested. So I moved back home and I left art school and then I kind of started, I just moved to the city. Um, and I started taking like adult education classes at like Parsons and Pratt yeah. and shit like that. Just doing like color theory and shit. Cause I guess in my head, I was like, if I do well enough in these classes, maybe I then can apply and you know, but at that point I had already moved to the city. I was already like working with actual artists and um, I eventually found myself in this uh, collective called collective hardware in the Bowery and Delancey. Um, I was living. So 
I had moved from Little Italy. I moved to Brooklyn with like some friends of mine from Parsons. So it was like these three chicks and these this one other dude. Um, and my neighbor at the time was this uh, special effects artist named Tate Steinzik. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar, if anyone's familiar with the show Face Off, but it was that old sci-fi um, special effects reality show. Yep. And t- Tate, Tate won a season or he was like close to winning a season. I don't fucking remember. This was after I think I knew him or maybe. But Tate, so like my bedroom window went directly onto his deck. Mm. And I was working for a weed delivery service called Brooklyn Organics um, at the time. I mean, completely, you know, you can't, it's not legal because it wasn't legal back then, but I was selling him weed. Yeah. So um, we got really close and he had me PA on a couple of his pictures. Um, and then that eventually moved into me like sculpting in the studio and like hanging out in the special effects studio. What I didn't realize is this, this place, because he was working in the basement of this huge building um, and they were trying to make it into like some Andy Warhol factory type shit. Yeah. Um, and they had an event space on the first floor. Like we had, we had a bunch of Reebok pop-up stores. We had a bunch of, um, uh, we had the CMJ music festival there. We had, we had a bunch of art galleries like that idiot brainwasher yeah, um, was yeah. there, you know, that, that, that movie exit to the gift shop, that yeah. piece of shit, that piece of shit fucked up our entire stairwell. He thought he was some like great artist. The guy's a fucking moron. He's splattering paint all over our stairs. And we're like, are you going to fucking repaint this? And he just, dips <laughs> like never did um, but i remember me and my friend dave hess we, we did everything for him um yeah that guy fucking sucks but i i've i've i, I guess i don't really know I've, that's really my my experience in the new york art scene was working with those people because you know you realize like all the bullshit that's around um and and most of the people like they don't want to be artists. They just want to like party and like get laid and you know be yeah. recognized. Like no one, no one cares about the actual craft. It's just they just want to be cool. Um, you know, a lot like Suck Lord. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's like like we do. We had the after party for that movie Choke. Um, you know that that dude who did Fight Club who was his next movie. Oh uh, yeah yeah yeah. Uh, that dude was such a fucking asshole. Was so he I was not I, cool. You know, he was cool, but he was coked out of his mind. We, we were up until like five in the morning. And he kept telling me and my friend Dave, dude, you guys are where it's at, man. Like, you're the real deal. And we're like, yeah. fuck you, you millionaire cocksucker. <laughs> like, yeah. this is when we were, this is when we we're like, I'm like 20, 21. And like, I didn't, yeah, I was a real asshole back then, too. Not that <laughs> <laughs> much has changed, but uh, nah. So, like, dude, I was literally, we were just getting paid in Metro cards and cocaine. And it was, Oh, Jesus Christ. Um, yeah, so that was fun. But I, I got to meet um, an amazing artist named Ronnie Catron, um, who he was a member of Andy Warhol's factory. He used to tell us he was his number two. I don't know how That's much a hard that sell. is. No, well, listen. So um, he has a very famous wife um, who's a fashion designer. Oh, my God. People are going to get so mad at me for not knowing this name. Um, Fuck. I'm just so not in that world and I don't care. Um, but That's Ronnie Catron, his ex no, his ex-wife is big. She's like a big deal in this yeah. movie. It's this piece of pop art. It's like this um, Mickey Mouse. Oh, Kelly Catron. Okay. Kelly Catron is her name. Thank you. My dear. So she's like this huge fucking. But yeah, no, so that was it. So I um and then what happened was I um at that studio, I became close with um Essentially, the guy who was selling everyone cocaine, who was this guy named, uh, um, like, there's no way he's going to hear this, but But he he was this, like, half Greek, half Italian mobster from Whitestone, um, who was, like, doing all the construction in the studio, too, and he eventually just wound up robbing the place blind. Like, I'm saying we had Reebok pop-up stores. We would clear out the place with, like, garbage bags full of shoes and, and, like, sweatshirts. And that's what I like gave my family for like for their Christmases and all that. Sorry, mom and dad, those shoes are totally stolen. Um, <laughs> this is like 15 years ago. So yeah. <laughs> but, um, so essentially, I, I got caught. They, they like the guys in the studio found out I was doing this, and you know, um, because my my buddy Dave ratted on me. And why am I telling you this? Um, and uh, and then I started. Working- 
who was like this mobster construction guy in uh, Whitestone. So then I was right. just like, I, I was living in Brooklyn and then I moved to Queens and I started fucking around with him. And then it was with him for a little bit. You know, those are stories. They were, they were fun. Yeah. <laughs> he used to go to the Poconos and do some weird shit. Um, but then I honestly, I just didn't draw. I didn't draw. I didn't paint. I didn't do anything for like 10 years. And like I, I, I cut it off. I, um, I almost became like a recluse and just, oh, it's awful. I, uh, <laughs> there, there was really like just, you know, those days just waking up and just fucking doing nothing, just getting stoned and drunk and watching TV. And I think, you know, it, those 10 years were terrible, but it also made me like almost the premier expert on everything pop culture because I've fucking seen everything. You know, yeah. you just, I'm just torrenting shit and just constantly like need some way to distract myself from my fucking own life. So <laughs> I'm like <laughs> constantly stoned, constantly watching shit that just like, yeah. you know, makes it so I don't like, I'm not looking at myself at all. Um, and that lasted a little bit. And then, uh, and then I don't know what it was. I, I fucking, I, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't do it anymore. I, I, I moved to Astoria. I made a good amount of friends, you know, um, and just neighborhood guys. And one of them eventually got me the sales gig and it kind of turned everything around. Like I, it, it was nice. I became like a nine to five guy and I fucking loved it. I loved the office job. I thought it was the greatest thing in the world. Like I, I just love talking to fucking people, you know, and, and yeah. it's just an, and it was an excuse. And like I was the guy, like you know, I'm buying presents for like you know the the the, the, the our secretary, like our office You're the manager, worst. you know yeah. what I mean? And like you know, like oh dude, I loved it. I just want to fucking like I just the community. Like I like people, you know what yeah. I mean? I just need to be around people, and uh, and uh, then that ended, and I was like, what am I gonna do? Um, my my best friend or my a guy I haven't talked to admittedly as much recently is named Austin. Um, his Instagram is only ruin. Um, he's an amazing musician. He's an amazing guy. Um, his name is Austin white. And he's, he's a very good friend of mine. And what he did, he's an upright bass player. He, he fucking like, he, I'm not saying he, he got rid of the bass, but all of a sudden he just dove right into doing synthesizers and electric music and like yeah. just everything wired and i didn't understand a fucking word of it and it's like he, the guy he's austin austin's very successful in what he does you know what i mean so he has a little bit of money and he like just buying all these things and like just accumulating and just reinventing himself essentially right and i got so jealous <laughs> and i was like i need to do something i want Cause I was like, I want, I want to create, I, I, like, I, listen, I can fucking draw, like I can draw really fucking well, you know? And I've been able to draw since I was three years old. Um, my, my grandfather was an artist. My mother can draw, like, it's just, we can draw, you know? Yeah. And like, since I was a kid, my mother's had me in fucking classes and all this shit. Um, and <clears throat> it was just like, I want something that I can do that in, but just, none of the pressure that I ever put on myself before, like this, once you, like, I don't know, I'm going to be a dick. I don't know if you can relate, but <laughs> once, once you, once you've done enough amazing pieces, yeah, that first stroke fucking scares the shit out of you. Cause you're like, it's not up to par. And then you're like, fuck, you know what I mean? And like, mm -hmm. there's this, there's this like mental block of you're not, like you did your best work. You're never going to be as good as that type stuff. Um, and it's, it's terrifying. So I wanted a way to make artwork where I didn't have that, where I didn't have that, like, I'm terrified of what I'm doing. Um, and it was like, well, if I make toys, who the fuck is going to know if they're bad or yeah. not? You know what I mean? And it's, it was so strange and far-fetched and like weird that it was like i'm just gonna fucking do that and then no one's gonna be able to say if it's good or bad of course i then became obsessed with it and now i'm like oh this is good this is bad like it's even worse with it yeah. now like i'm like yeah i'm like way more judgmental on myself and i'm way more critical of other people's work too because like i see how much effort i put in to what i do like i mean fuck dude i, I mean i uh i i don't know what I'm is critical. that 
so you when you decided to get back into art and to have like a what you thought would be less critical like eye on yourself and stuff how did you come up with toys like who were you seeing what was happening yeah you know it's funny <laughs> It's very stupid. It's, it's a very quick exchange. It was it was that guy Austin who I'm telling you about. Mm -hmm. um, I bought these. I'm obsessed with this like t-shirt company called Paul Bear Press. I'm wearing one right now. It's a it's a maniac shirt. Oh, red. Yeah, it's actually bad. So like they do all these like you know '70s like horror movie shirts and like all they're dope. And they also sold these things, um, which are these little bobbleheads of serial killers. Oh, so is that this Gacy? is well yeah this is joe and gacy oh, with his little geez. look how cute he is right and like yeah. look how cute like cute the zodiac like it's like a disney zodiac killer i love it and then and then i got the uh this this one just came out this is the the ed gain oh, <laughs> it looks so good <laughs> they're adorable right and yeah it's like i mean there are runs of like 600 that this one artist does for this company yeah and i told him about that and he I was like, dude, look how cool these are. Oh, you know what it was? Is I was buying stuff for my office. Mm -hmm. Like, because, you know, I had a desk now and I was like, I want to be cool. I want to be the cool guy yeah. who has, like, you know, weird pens and, you know, <laughs> like, and like an army of darkness mouse pad, you know, yeah. which I got. You know, I was there cool. I, I, had, I had a Ren and Stimpy mug. That's where my pens and the coffee mug I drank out of was the Homer Simpson one where you can put the donut in his mouth. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I'm cool. Yeah. Um, but. <laughs> So that was the whole thing. It's like I was getting like flair for my office, and then I was like, I can't fucking put this on my office because all them serious goes. Yeah. Like, it, it, it was it was an Israeli run company. Like they would make me like take all my shit down when the owners came in. This guy named Shareem, I think. We interrupted this broadcast of Toys on Top to bring you this. Meanwhile, in a galaxy of bootleg treasures. Dov2, we have a engine failure. We almost crash land on DKE Toy Planet. Oh my, we're doomed. <laughs> Wait! Salvation! Hooray! We're saved in DLP2! Limited edition custom artist made action figures and DKE Toys! Check out www.dkatoys.com for a full catalog. Hooray for custom action figures! DKE! But either way, like my background was Chris Farley from Black Sheep when he's got like the headband and the phone yeah. like attached to his face. And I'm like a fat guy on the phone. They made me take everything. Like I couldn't be funny. I couldn't be expressive at all. Yeah. That was the that was the issue. But um, so uh, so yeah. So I make these. I show my buddy, and he was like, "Have you heard about this guy Healy?" I don't know how he knew about Healy. Mm -hmm. He's literally he's like a a noise artist, like, uh, uh, he's part of, like, the DIY scene in Brooklyn. You're like, oh, so weird. Covered in tat, like, he's a fucking weird guy. And he's like, yo, you should know Healy. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. I looked it up, and it was right, like, I think the, it was, he had just released the Orange Shaman, um, like, that bright orange one with, like, the oh, black. Yeah. And I was like, this is the coolest fucking thing I've ever seen, yeah. <laughs> you know? Like, it was so cool. And I was like, I could fuck like, dude, I could do that. Like I could fucking do that. And then I got in my head, you know, I was like, holy shit, this is a thing. Uh, of course, again, I thought it was way bigger than it was. I was like, I see this, I see this artist who released, like he was like, dude, he releases his stuff and sells out in like 30 seconds. And yeah. I was like, that's crazy. Like, really? Like, it's like that. And like, of course, first I didn't realize that Healy was literally the top. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I also didn't really, yeah, like literally, like I'm like, oh, I could do that. Like, he's literally like the top of all echelons, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, Ugh. so I'm like, oh, dude, I'm going to make this. And there's going to be like all this, like everyone's going to want them and I'm going to sell them so quickly. <laughs> <And all this. laughs> I thought, because it wasn't just that. You know what else it was? It was, I have a buddy named Tiago. Um, in, in Astoria. Actually, Tiago's the place I was at when we were talking. I was in like his bathroom watching his dog. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was telling me that there are these artists who do lotteries because he's all into like gaming and computers. Like they have mechanical keyboards and there are like these lotteries for these like specific keys that have like Pokemon in them or some yeah. shit, you know? And they sell for like 500 bucks. 
and they're like this fucking big. Like we could, we should be doing that right now, honestly. Yeah. We should get out of fucking toys and just make fucking keys. Like why not? It, it, the, the casting wouldn't be any different. I've, I've been telling people this for a while, no joke. Yeah. And um, and like I was like, okay, so resin's a thing. Like this is a thing. Like people want to buy this shit, and then yeah. um, and then it just became about what am I gonna do? What is my toy gonna be? And I think. For like three days, I was going to do a droid Vader. Um, it was going to be like, you know, Vader while he's being made. It's going to be like, I. that's what it was. It's like, I I went about it the right way because I, I was getting unemployment. I had this money. Um, I have a really easy living situation where, you know, I own this apartment. You know what I mean? So there's like, it's really just paying maintenance. It's no, it's like rent or whatever. And by me, I mean, the family owns this apartment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not me um and uh it's like i i just bought so many fucking oh no so many i bought so many vintage figures that like i have I, I would just look up i would i would like find something that i thought was cool enough and i would just like go to town yeah. and like seriously i have dude Boxes. like some of the some of these are so fucking and like not only this, like I obsessed over like old vintage ones, and then I got like pretty much I just bought every weird um, uh, like reaction figure, mm-hmm. not Super Seven, but before when they were Funko and like all like crazy and shit. So and like I don't know, man. So now it's like, oh dude, I love this. What I completely you completely distract like these toys have literally just completely distracted me. Now I have no idea what I'm fucking talking about. You know Beastman from uh Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so so you, here I'll, I'll be. so you are getting at this point you are seeing Healy made and you start oh, buying yeah, yeah, thank you. yeah thank you, you start buying all these toys. So Well, I knew I knew I was going to make toys. I, at that yeah. point I was like this is what I'm doing. Um there was a very brief stint where I was thinking so Fubi, which I, I feel like every artist does. Like they, they find out about toys and they're like, I think oh, that's no, their I'm progression. Just sculpt, I'm just going to sculpt some monsters. And yeah. that's really like how we can be original in this. Um, I would love personally to do more of a pen dragon thing and to make my own 375s. You know what I mean? Pen dragon or epoch. Um, I love Epoch. The only thing is, and I hate to say this to anyone who's making figures, I hate the GI Joe pelvises. Like, if you mm-hmm. bootleg a figure and you see those open legs, I think that's ugly as shit. Like, I don't yeah. want those figures, you know. Um, and that's like pretty much all Epoch does. Um, but yeah, I really hate those. Like, you know how like just the way it looks. Like, how much cooler does like this look? You know what yeah. I mean? And those stupid fucking. You don't have to. Agree with me. <laughs> no, no, like for sure. But I don't like the gaps. I don't like the. Yeah, weird, I yeah, really don't I like them. I, I think it's ugly. It makes it look like they're all wearing diapers. You know, yeah. it, it's it's not really for me. Um, but uh, so uh, uh Epoch, we're well, no, making these things. Yeah, so Fubi, yada yada yada. So um, I'm trying to think honestly. I'm gonna I'm gonna credit Austin on this again. My buddy Austin White. He he told me it was as I'm telling him I'm doing this. The um, those pictures of Giuliani came out where he's melting. Yeah, <laughs> right. And he was like, "You should totally do a figure on that motherfucker," you know. And it was his idea, 100 percent his idea. And I said, "You know, that was let's let's do it." And it was when I just started. He had just started melting. It was something that linked up, and I was like. It took me like like ten seconds to be like, oh, I'm gonna use this figure and this figure. You know, <laughs> like it was yeah. like this is an uh, it was the um, all I needed was a guy in a suit. So I found a guy in a suit, which is the uh, the ghoul from uh, uh, They Live. Of course, mm-hmm. it's very appropriate, you know, the ghoul. Yeah. Um, and then I I got the melting that the the acid thug from RoboCop, where he was all like, yeah. and right. that's the Gugliani. It's just a head swap. If anyone needs to know, it's 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 a it's a it's your classic head swap. <laughs> yeah. So you start by making this figure, and we kind of skipped over things. But at what point did you think like this is it? Also, I want to be called Ghoul of Gaba. Oh, Ghoul of Gaba was before. No, okay. Ghoul of Gaba. Ghoul of Gaba has just been a thing of mine. I, I mean. <laughs> 
I um, oh, yeah, yeah. So I, I talked to Sucklord about this too when I went over. So when I went over to meet Sucklord, I brought him a quarter of weed. I brought him like a bottle of THC lean. You brought him, him offerings, is what you brought. I, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gave him, I gave him two bags of edibles. Yeah. Um, I, I brought a bunch of beer, and that was it. That was just for us to get fucked up. But then I, I, I brought him. So there's a place called Euro Market near me. I live in Astoria, New York, in Queens which is hands down the greatest neighborhood in all of the USA. Um, and there's this place called Euro market where you can literally get like products that are banned from the U S from like all the Eastern European countries, all like, you know, um, there are a lot of people around me who are white Muslim, like, uh, um, from former Yugoslavia, you know, Albanians, yeah. Serber, Serbo, like, they all speak Serbo Croatian. Like all, all my buddies, like Amir, like they're all fucking. Yeah. Um, and it's pretty much their store. So what they do is they have this whole section of dried cured meats. <laughs> yeah. Fucking delicious. Like I'm saying like 60 different fucking types, like of a lamb and like, you know, all these different types of like, uh, there's, there's this fucking salami that's been cured in wine with like walnuts. Like it, it, oh, it's fucking amazing. No, and yeah. like cheeses and all this stuff. So, and they have these great um, olives, like straight from Greece. Cause you know, sorry, is a big Greek place too. Um, so I brought him this spread, like this legit spread of like cured meats. And it's kind of where the name comes from. It's like my, I, I reconnected with my friends, Austin and those guys, they, they, they own a recording studio called, um, well, Austin does called, uh, GSI records in Manhattan yes. on 31st. And we reconnected after like a year or two, like when I was separate, I was living in this other shithole in Brooklyn. We hadn't really seen each other. Austin was doing his own thing. And I brought them all these meats and I gained some weight. And the combination of me being fatter than they recognize me and pulling meats out of my pocket, eventually it became me being the gabagool. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so it was like it was like this whole thing where it's like, oh, you know, he's just some fat guy carrying around cured meats. Yeah, he's the ghoul. He's the ghoul of God. <laughs> 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 so. Essentially, like, yeah, and, and and let's face it, it's the coolest fucking name ever. But I don't know. I mean, it's whatever. It, it's very much me. It's very, it's very New York. It's very, yeah. you know, it's it's whatever. I mean, I guess. Oh, I fucking hate people who like use. I hate people who who try to lump in their personalities with any one thing. You know okay. what I mean? With any. So I don't want to say that New York has to do with my personality, but um, I think it has to do with like my arrogance, maybe. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> or my, like, or, like my assholeness. It's like yeah. it's like I've like anyone like anyone who's gonna come at me. I've had people way worse. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, like I live yeah. in I live in fucking New York. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? So it's like uh, I don't know. It, there there is some there is an arrogance that comes with it. I think, but. I mean, there has to be, and, yeah. you know, my, my whole family is from here. You know, we're all, we're all old Jews from South third and have um, in Brooklyn. And my grandparents have this hardware store called burgers for years. And like, it's like, a, yeah, all my family now is in Long Island or, um, where we're all across the city, um, midtown. Yeah. 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 Like I would never, I could never leave. You know what I mean? Like, I really, yeah. there's no other place I would ever want to be. And I've, I've done, I've done the whole cross country thing, man. Like, we, these guys, like I said, my buddies who have this recording studio, um, they, they were renovating. So they, 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 they cut their lease and they were buying, they bought a new place. It was fucking crazy expensive. And then they renovated the whole thing. Um, so they had all this time. We wound up taking a cross country tour um, because they also had a band. So we mm -hmm. drove from New York all the way to, um, Washington and then down to Oakland and visited some friends and then came back. The whole trip took like two and a half months or something like that. And that's when, so what happened was we, we decided we started as a joke, we bought overalls. We were like, we're going to, we're going to go to a Walmart and buy some overalls, like, oh, you know, geez. tour overalls or something. Yeah. So then every place we would like go and buy patches. Like it became this whole thing. We're obsessed with fucking patches. Mm -hmm. um, and then we came back and we were like, the studio is still being renovated. We should create our own patch company, um, which is why I don't know if you've ever gotten. No, you've never bought anything from me, or else you would have gotten a <laughs> Bart. You would have gotten a Bart Boy patch and an I'd Fuck Me patch, and I also make the 
Are you afraid of the bar patch? So it was this thing. It was like a time. It was like, we're just going to make fucking patches. Yeah. So it's essentially like the same industry, man. And I know a lot of people like Daniel Brown, who was in the patches and then did this too. Yeah. So we, we decided to make our own patch company called the Brothers Deloon. And we did that for a little bit. So that's why, like, a lot of people get shit from me. Like, I give them pins. Like, I have this Crossfire pin that's, like, you know, the game Crossfire. Yeah, yeah. Essentially, it's like... We interrupt this broadcast of Toys on Top to bring you this. Earth 2 Hentai! Aliens have landed. Earthling. I want lowbrow art and bootleg toys. Toys, 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 toys. Well, you come to the right place. Earth to Kentucky is a shop for folks who love vintage sci-fi, lowbrow, and art bootleg toys. Toys, 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 toys. They're located over there at 836 Main Street, Covington, Kentucky. Toys, toys, toys. They carry original art, vintage action figures, designer bootleg toys, and toys, 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 and t-shirts. Designed exclusively for their store by some of their favorite artists. Thank you, Earthling. I enjoy Earth to Kentucky. I have all my favorite bootleg art toys. toys. Hey, look at that over there! It's a spaceship! Yeah. I need to go now. Someone's filming me in my spaceship. Shop now. www.earthtokentucky.com That's earth2kentucky.com Or just land your spaceship when they're open. I make much cooler stickers now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, Because it's all me and I don't have my other friends. But it, it was like... I don't know. I'm just giving you a little history. Like, yeah, that, that, that was another RT thing that I did. I had the Brothers Deloon, and I think that's why I was a little more confident in doing this. Um, but, uh, yeah. No, we were doing crowds. Oh, no, yeah, that's what I was saying. I fucking hate America. It's, it's awful. Okay. Like, I, like, I, know, I, I don't hate America like, as, a, as like a concept. Like, I love America. But, yeah. like, all of your towns are the fucking same. Like, none of you people are fucking original. Like, you all live in the same fucking places. You yeah. got your gas stations, and you got your McDonald's, and you got your fucking bullshit. And then you got your weird coffee shop where people play like music soon. And then you all think you're like weird by wearing like piercings and tattoos, but it's like, cool. Like, <laughs> then, like I fucking, I'm so bored. Like I really hate it. I really like, unless the only places I ever really want to go are fucking New York, maybe Florida. And then some places in California, but even California, man, I fucking hate California. It's yeah. like LA, LA is like a bastardized shopping mall. They call a city. And then, I mean, San Francisco, I guess San Francisco is kind of cool. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean it's it's all right. Uh, so you are we have gotten so we know the name and you started creating toys when you first start molding. So how did we get from that first toy to where you are now? You're do you're painting back. Where where, where am I now? <laughs> well, like just from the because you called it just the head swap. So you got from there to molding and casting and painting mm -hmm. backers like no one else no one else well, does what you do that i've seen um i haven't seen anyone do as many yeah i guess there aren't that no there are some people who hand paint their stuff um so here's the thing and, and <laughs> it's really it's it's about me being inept it's my friend the guy who fuck so these two guys, I've been telling you about this recording studio. It's two guys. It's mm -hmm. Austin and there's another guy who I'm not going to mention. The other guy is being sued by my friend Austin. Um, there's a falling out. Yeah. So this guy who was going to help me, he was going to help me because he's pretty good with illustration and Photoshop. And he's got a good eye. And that's what I did. I asked him. I was like, listen, dude, I'm doing these carbacks. I'm doing this thing. Like. I would love you to edit like that. The plan was not for me to hand paint these. The plan was for me to like maybe hand paint or to do some type of thing with Illustrator with him. Mm -hmm. um, and he kind of bailed on me and I said, fuck it. I need to create this. Like, cause I, I had already cast the toy and I was so anxious to get it out that I even, the first one I did is just completely hand drawn. Dove Dove's actually offered me a little money for it. I don't know if I, have you sold the first toy you ever made? Uh, ever, kinda, ever made. Yeah, kind ever of, made. but it's really just being stored on my best friend's wall. It wasn't okay. like a, yeah, so he just is keeping it. Still in, in your possession. I know, I know, I know. So, like, I have mine still, and, like, that was a thing. It's like, I need to, I, I was so amped. I was like, it worked. It fucking yeah. worked. I made a fucking toy, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you got to... I got to do something. And so it was, it was a, a cross between my impatience, my friend's 
um, stubbornness and uh, yeah, just that. And I said, fuck it. I'm going to draw over a picture. So I, I had these things printed out. I was like, I'm just going to fucking paint over. I'm just going to do what I used to do to like my Latin textbook in fucking high school. And I'm just going to fuck this dude up. And that was it. But that, that's where it evolved. That's really all it was is I did those couple and I sold them to like friends of mine. And then actually that's not true. The first one I ever sold went to Brian from trash can lobster. Rad. And I didn't even know him. He just like hit me up. He was like, I need it. Blah, 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 blah. And then that started the whole thing. Um, shout out to my man, Brian McGinn, my, my favorite deadbeat dad. Um, <laughs> so you, you start hand painting these and then at some point, uh, cause we're, we're only, you've only been doing this for what? About a, not a full year yet. No, not yet. Not so yet. you started hand painting and I remember, I, I remember seeing your pieces the first time that Dove had them. You might have, it might have been the first was that one. was it was that the first time you saw me? Was it was a DK? Yeah, because I went to go buy one and they were sold out. Really? Yes. No, no, no. You're so full of shit. Because we were talking. We were no, no. talking. Oh, I may have I may have talked to you, but I don't think I had seen some of your work. We were totally talking. And you were like, you want the Jesus thing. And I was like, bro, I don't think you want the Jesus thing. No, no, that yeah. <laughs> it. So it was that show. It was that show. I was like, no, no, I want the Jesus thing. I was I like, do. no, I'm saying. I'm saying this is bullshit. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, I remember going in to buy it and it, like it being gone. And like, I went to click on it and then dub, I think it was during DKE and he was like, the ghoul or yeah, it's gone. Like they're, they're sold out. And I was like, Oh, what, uh, what the hell's happening well, here? Well, well, if you think about it too. So I started my first, I'd say the first maybe 10 I sold were only $25. <laughs> Yeah, and then by the time you got to DKE, it was only 50. Well, Dove said, yeah, you got to go 50. And I, I'm like, oh, shit, people are going to pay 50 Yeah. I'm like, okay. And then it's like, that's the thing. It's an ego thing. You, you do. Then you realize, and then, then you see DKE, and you're like, wait, why am I only paying? Like, why am I only charging 50? Like, yeah. you see these, these other things that go for 75, and you're like, oh, dude, I spent like – six more hours on a piece of this person yeah. Did, you know yeah. I mean? and it's that is the one yeah i don't know but even now it's like okay no, 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 let's rewind going back that's when you first that's when you first saw my shit yeah the first run was my uh drink the ghoul aid series yep which was uh oh, it's it's totally so it's weird dove is so approachable and I think more artists are, are kind of realizing that now, which is why he just has like fucking so many people. And then, so in the, in this next, yeah, like the next one, I think you probably know, he said he has like, is it like 15 more artists in this show than he's used yeah, to or something like, like that? Packed. Yeah. Yeah. Which is why I feel even worse. Cause I'm like forcing him to take my shit on yeah. top of it. Yeah. Like in a way, cause it's like, he's like, yeah, I guess I'll take it. Oh, I feel bad. I also, like, I didn't do, I was going to do the silver screen one too. Dude, I, I don't know what I'm going to do with these things now. I have, I have like 15 prints of Charlie Chaplin as Hitler right now. And I don't know what I'm going to do with that. <laughs> All right. Well, it's from the, 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 the movie, The Dictator. That he yeah. Did, where he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that was my, you know, actually, no, my original idea was to do those like incredibly racist cartoons from like the original, like Disney and like Looney Tunes. Yeah. And he, moly. yeah, he, he nicks those, but like my whole thing is like I want people to realize how fucking racist Walt Disney actually was. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so you you come out and let's let's take it back to that point in which you sure. you either reach out to Dub or Dub reaches out to you and you Well no 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 I, I'll take you there. It was Magoob Toys, the Magoob okay. himself, who reached out to me um and was talking to me about you know he wasn't the only artist. Um it was Magoob and uh, uh, his name is Patty Clem, but I forget. Uh, it's it's dark. Is it dark rainbow? Oh, I'm so I'm so sorry, dude, for not remembering what your thing is, but what your handle was. But um, 
so th- there were there were two like they were some of the first two artists who bought my stuff and mm-hmm. like as in like they had like over three thousand followers and yeah it was clear that they had been making bootlegs for a while um i think it's dark rainbow bootlegs fuck i'm so sorry and i send them my stuff and i had bought blisters from some random company that were like the resealable ones you know what yeah. I mean? that are clearly a little junkier than yeah. like doves and whatever and they go to me and they're like independently they each were like hey man if you want to get better blisters i can help you out <laughs> like like they were like thanks for the piece but if yeah. you want to get better blisters so i'm like oh shit like my work sucks like i yeah. need to like work something out and the joke i made to magoo was like i was like i don't want to, i don't want to buy blisters from dove i want him buying mine uh, you know what i mean like yeah. I want, like that was that was the instant reaction i was like as soon as i had a, like a segue to dove i was like i took it i was like i'm fucking like biting I'm like, dude, hit him up. Tell him I want to sell for him. And he did. And Dove, within like half an hour, I had Dove's number and I was talking to him. Yeah. And because, you know, Dove's just the man. And Dove essentially, he he kind of put me, he's so amazing. Like he's been in the industry for so long. And it's not just like a lot of people only accredit Dove on his like business savvy and all that. But he also is like a really good art critique. Like he, he, him and his wife, Sarah Joe, like those, they, they are so heavily involved in just the arts. You know what I mean? And all yeah. the galleries, like seriously, every West Coast gallery, they all know and they talk to it. Like it's amazing. Like those people are so smart and they have such good taste. Um, and it was really it, talking to him that first time, it, it, it like really molded what this whole Gula Gaba thing was going to be, you know, it was like, he essentially gave me my, uh, my artist statement in a way, like, well, what is the Gula Gaba? Like, what are we doing here? What is the, what is the the direction? What can we do? And any artist who is a little nervous about, you know, or, or a little unsure about what they're doing, like absolutely talk to Dub and he will, uh, he'll make you, yeah, he'll make you feel like a million dollars. It's amazing. Um, and that was it. So I talked to him. We decided a run that I could do for him because my whole plan was just to do the whole New York thing. I was going to do uh, Guglianis and I was going to do Cuomosexuals, which, you know, I, I, I do Cuomosexuals. Yeah. Because, and this was I, I know it's, it's in the DK like, show. You can hear them say it. But I was just doing Cuomo because he had nipple piercings. I had no idea about any of the sexual misconduct stuff. And none of us none and none of us did. So the whole Cuomo sexual thing was just that he was into like bondage and like body modification. Yeah. <laughs> and that was the whole idea. Like I have the first one right here. And then all of a sudden these allegations started happening. I was like, oh fuck yeah, let's go. So I yeah. started like like every Cuomo has like his cock wrapped around his neck and yeah. like you know, they're all different. And um the, the figure actually has like a penis and like nipples exposed and they're all like pierced and shit. And that's another just head swap. That's a uh, Phantom of the Opera. Uh, Super Seven with the same, <laughs> with the same ghoul <laughs> body. <laughs> but whatever, it works. It looks like them, so yeah. it's it's cool. But um, all these things, a thousand percent, are up to Dove, or are because of Dove. Like, and Dove is not the type to tell you what to do. He he very much will like steer you into your own yeah. way, which is nice. Um, he's more like a tide. Than like a propeller. Yeah. <laughs> so you you get in that first show, and after you you sell out because it's crazy. I did. Yeah. I What's did. that feel it, like? Like you just start entering into the toys like a lot more heavily. What is that like to sell out? That was that was yeah that was Cloud Nine. That was fucking yeah. That was awesome. Just 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 being talked about, and then seeing that. I mean, I'm pretty sure. It sold out. It didn't. It didn't necessarily sell out on the first day. It sold out before day two started. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I think they sold like like the last two before they went live. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was fucking awesome. I mean, if anything, it was just bragging rights with the boys. Like I had to be like, "Fuck you, Brian. Fuck you, Hella. I rule." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it was it was very reassuring. It was very. That being said, um, I think you can agree that there is a false reality that comes with that, where 
all of a sudden I'm selling it out. And then there's like this wave of customs. I'll get like a week worth, like all of a sudden for like the next week, I'll get a few customs. And that feels great too. Cause like, I'm actually just making the full money on those. And yeah. those are funner because I get to like be a little more creative and you know, whatever. Um, but then all of a sudden it drops and you're like, you make these pieces that you think you love. And like, essentially a lot of the pieces I make are almost self portraits in a way, because it's like, Oh, this is so pretentious. But like, like the, the shit I have in my shop, I have like Ginny Sachs on the Sopranos, you know, the fat yeah. chick, like Johnny Sachs's wife, who like, you know, obsessively eating Snickers bars. Like that's totally me. And then like, you know, the, the, the movie freaked is like, um, this like great movie with Keanu Reeves who's never accredited for it, but it's, it's the other guy from Bill and Ted's what's his name. Uh, the dude from Bill and Ted's mentioned, not Keanu. Oh. Fucking Scott's gonna kill me for not knowing his name. Um, the other funny guy. Well, <laughs> the only other movie he was in was like Lost Boys. Who is it? Oh, thank you. Um, it doesn't matter. But uh, no, no. Um, so it's just like, like essentially, like I do think, like you know, I have another thing in my shop. It's already the strongest man in the world. As Crumb from the Are Real Monsters. Oh, movie. yeah, yeah. I saw that. And today. they're so fucking good. Like, these yeah. pieces are amazing. Yeah. And no one's buying them. And I bet you, without a doubt, when Dove does his promotional stuff for me, my shot will be clear. It, it, it's almost like I'm in this, like, limbo where I can only sell around DKX, like, um, mm. like, shows and stuff. Like, I, I get a little bit of customs, you know what I mean? And then it's like, but again, I've been in this for less than a year. I I don't even have 1,500 followers yet. I'm at like 14 something, you know what I mean? Like, maybe when I get to that 10,000 mark that like, you know, the guys, or if I do, you know, yeah. the, the guys who, you know, have it, maybe then, you know, it'll be easier for me to maybe sustain off of it because um, honestly, I, I don't like to, to survive, like I know everyone says Manhattan is very expensive, but my life specifically, like I don't need much to sustain a week. I really don't. The most expensive thing I do is smoke weed. You know what I mean? So it's like, that's really, yeah. No one's food, I guess. So for, <laughs> I guess. yeah. So for Gula Gaba, is the goal for you as an artist and for you as a toy artist, is this, is your goal to eventually make this? I want to be. I want to be a working artist. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I. I. I have always like. It's not even like for me. It's not a question of what I want. It's kind of like. It's almost something cosmic. Like I would be doing something like someone like you're my aunt's a disservice by not doing it. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like. I. I really like, I don't know. You, I don't know if you've ever seen my life drawing. I'll send you some stuff after this, but it's like, I've been drawing that way since I'm very young, like very young. Like I, I have things I've done when I was like 11 that, and it's, it's almost like it would, it, it's, well, what is it? Is it a Bronx tale? The, um, the worst thing in life is wasted talent. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's essentially like my, not my mantra. It's more like my, my paranoia yeah. <laughs> is like, yeah. you need to be doing this, you piece of shit, or else you're fucking like wasting something that, you know, your family gave you, which is, you know, something I, I, I mean, I love, you know, yeah, my family. That's all. So, okay, kind of, yeah, I need to, like, yeah. But again, it's a, it's a big difference in seeing Healy sell out in 30 seconds and <laughs> where we're at right now. Cause that's what I yeah. thought it was going to be like, you know, I thought it was going to be this like dope ass scene where, you know, there were all these people around us, but I got, I got a lot of stuff in the fire though, man. Like we, yeah. um, I'm actually working with a buddy of yours or I'm trying to work with a buddy of yours. Which buddy he, of mine? I'm not sure. So we talked about it. Okay. Um, he said, less he said is he's going to be a hard fucking kit bash, but I think he's going to do it. Um, me and your boy, sir, collect a lot. Yeah, Miles is dope. Yeah, he's, he's cool people. And I was recently offered um, a, an opportunity, mm -hmm. and I, I opened it up to him because he said he wanted to do a collab with me. And I was like, dude, I think this, is, this would be it. Um, there's... <laughs> 
there's an artist there's a guy he's an artist he's also an animal and a very strange dude he blew up on tiktok recently he has over 20 million plays and he uh his name is huey crowley I don't know if you know, he's the guy who's wearing like the fake tits and he's yeah. got like the one tattoo in his head and Walmart tattoo in his throat. And he sent me a bunch of voice messages and he likes my work and he totally wants me to make his piece. And I told Sir Collect Love that he's going to do the, the figures. So, well, uh, well I, I mean, you're doing the same thing, motherfucker. I see that Joker shit. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't know if you know this, but I originally... So when I did the Gulianis, the next figure I did was the Hulk. But then I made this guy, who was my Joker figure. This oh, is right. the actual. This is the actual Joker from Mego from uh, nineteen like fifty or no nineteen like seventy something. Yeah. Right. This is this is the one where he's like driving in the car. Oh, and I yeah, reached yeah. and I reached out to Joker Gang, you know the guy from Florida, the disgusting dude. Yeah. <laughs> and he totally told me he wanted my toys, but I just was like. And then DK blew up, and I was like, "Fuck!" I got so distracted by all this yeah. other shit, you know. But you know, there might be a chance where I'm fighting Jokers against you, Joker Joke. Gang versus your boy, dude. Hey, one of the things that I've been doing right now is like uh, making these TikTok people, and I'll I'll send it to them, or I'll show them, and then it's like they freak out and like that there's a guy called southern dad i just did and i like he loved it and i, I saw it. that i saw that he, he i have seen yeah dude it is it is a good kind of like strategy and i was and again that was my thought is like fuck it i'm gonna do this thing for joker and but dude he just seems like such an untrustworthy huey though huey actually seems like he knows what he's doing like it, it's yeah. so strange because he seems like he's out there but he's like he's actually professional yeah <laughs> it's funny but uh yeah the joker i'm working with is my least favorite currently oh. yeah and if it's in here it's in here I, he doesn't listen to my shit but uh <laughs> like, it doesn't matter i could imagine i could yeah imagine. like he just it's just like how he conducts what he does like he's 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 a fucking i mean mm. well it's like he doesn't, I, he, doesn't, he doesn't live in new york right he just came to Chicago. new york to like film those videos or whatever. yeah he lives in chicago so I, I made that the second toy for him sent it to him because he was like oh let's do because we made like 300 bucks on the first auction yeah well, just, the same the same with this one right i know the uh, i saw the last high bit was 300 at least and someone wanted the yeah and which is cool like that's a great thing the first toy sucked so bad because i was just trying to learn how to do customs the second one i like pieced together and made it look <laughs> like him which is rad uh but i i it was just like if you're gonna do an auction that has to do with toys you got to do certain things like you got to post a certain way you got to tell them to tag a certain way and he didn't do it and then he's like posting at weird times and he had the toy for 20 25 days before he even posted about it tell me something did the audio just change a little bit i don't i don't want there to be like inconsistency i just turned off a fan near me no 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 you're good you're good yeah okay, yeah cool. And it was just, it, it, it's just been hard dealing with him because he's so sporadic and he, I don't think he knows what his craft is yet because he keeps getting banned. And so he keeps losing his following. Does he? Yeah. His he TikTok, seems like kind of, because dude, this other, well, yeah, actually Joker games fan, but he literally has like strip shows on his lives and shit. He, he, he recently got pulled from that show, unfortunately. So if you watch like some of the, the old stuff and he's on it, it's great. And, Specifically, the one with Joker. You'll see there's a bunch of idiots who are like addicted to drinking twisted teas and smoking blunts on Jeez. fucking on Instagram. Like, oh, look, I'm smoking a blunt. Yeah. <laughs> but they're clowns who have fans. And since I already fucking have a Joker figure, I was like, screw it. I'm just gonna print out a stupid picture of him and then fucking boom, boom, boom. You know? Yeah. We're good. And did so. you? Did you? Are you? Have you sent him one? No, I haven't done shit. Like I said, like I, <laughs> there's so many other things that, like, yeah, yeah. I, I should. I honestly, I think I might now. I think, but no, and I don't even don't... charge him. Just in if you just send it to him. Oh yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, no and then in the box, all you got to do is put like, "Hey, this is for you. I want to make more for your fans. Let's make a deal." Well, that was the thing. He no, but he hit me up. He said he would love to have them. And then his little crony DJ Art Kill, who's this tattoo artist who considers himself an artist too is like yeah dude you like stuff but i don't i don't necessarily know how 
I, Huey, Huey's got fucking 20 million views. I think I'll just stick with him and yeah. like see see where that goes instead of just fucking, I don't know. Because at least that dude's an artist. Like he, he paints himself and, you know, he, yeah. if you look at his stuff, he, he does have some wild shit. So um, we're, we're like up to current Gula Gaba right now. Like we've walked through DK and you, we walked like from the beginning of this to right now ish. Well, no, no, no. We did the first series. We haven't talked anything about the second series. Oh, let's talk the second it. series. Sorry, sorry, I skipped it. Let's talk second series and then. I mean, not that it's, it's really not that interesting. It's just we gotta you know, text, same. or we gotta talk second series and then we gotta talk current, current designer con stuff and all that stuff and then yeah. So go ahead. That is, that actually is. It's funny. Dude, I've done so many pieces. I think I I did the math the other day, and since then I've done like 50. Uh, we, we were at, yeah, I think I was at like 250 the last time I counted in, in like less than a year, and they're all fucking hand-painted one-offs. You know I mean? Yeah, that's insane. And it's like, no, it fucking is. Like, I'm actually proud of myself. I'm legitimately proud of myself. I... I yeah, I've done a lot of work, and it's not just the fact that I'm painting these things. I have to come up with every single one of these ideas, you know? And for the most part, yeah, it's like I've, I've come up with almost 300 one-offs at this point. Mm -hmm. And they're all, they all have their original gags, and they all have their own little jokes, and it's like, yeah, now I am just tooting my own cock. Um, <laughs> bro, you should see... I can show you what I have for the, the new series. All right, well, well, let's <laughs> not yet, not yet. Let's talk. All right, so the second series, um, Dove was yeah, Dove was on board. He, um, I, I was the one. So after the first series hits, I get all these fucking people hit me up. Um, specifically, all these people who have been in the industry. I think that's when I started talking to like Dollar, and that's when I started. Talking to other people. No, I started talking to Dollar because Dollar was doing the review show and I sent him some things to be reviewed. Um, and then he saw the series and he was all happy. And he was the one, actually. He was the one. So for my second series, I I really focused on the toy. I was like, I want to. The only criticism I got from people, or not criticism, but like from Maybe John. John gave me a lot of shit because he's like, you're not a toy maker, man. You're just a painter. And it's like... Jeez, yeah. You know, but in a way, in a way, yes, it's a little harsh, but in a way, he's right. It's it's his mantra now. He still fucking says this to me, even though dude, I spent like... The, so the last toy, I think, was made from seven different figures. <laughs> it was so for, the, for, the, um, for a few ghoul men. Um, it was the crow body... It was the uh, the head was from those Eagle Troops, the uh, the UK um, GI Joe ones, the same oh, series yeah. that same series that Killer Bootlegs did Knuckle Duster from. It's mm -hmm. it's it's that it's one of those. It's got that dope helmet, um, and then the tip of the, his head was from this weird uh, puppet master figure that I took and I just snipped off the top, so you had a little like horn Love or whatever. It. And then um, the arms were, it was first aid droid shoulder. And then it was a gun that I got from, I think some random like Chinese figure. And then the other arm was the Mike Myers, sh Mike Myers shoulder that I cut to make it look like his sleeve was ripped. And then it was a part of the first, first aid droid from uh, uh, Star Wars from Kenner. And then the full arm was then the Terminator from Funko's reaction figure. Damn. And like, it was, yeah, it was, in, it was fucking detailed. And like, I did the splatter and the splatter, I wanted to show that I can do my splatter, but like to make it functional. Yeah. So I did red splatter to make it look like blood. You know what I mean? So like, yeah. I really fucking tried on the figure on that one. And um, I don't know if anyone appreciates it. Cause for me, it's like, I get it. My stuff, the figure is a talisman. It's really about the gag. It's really about the paint job and all that. But again, like I, I came into this trying to be more like suck Lord as in I'm a pop artist. I don't yeah. want to be a toy maker. I want to be a pop artist. I want this to be seen as legitimate pop art because it's like you're making a figure, you're making a toy, you're making something that exists 
in reality, except you're making it like it's like uh, it's like those rappers who get like diamond chains made out of you know the the Rice Krispie guys. You know, yeah. like yes, it's like it, it might be something that looks like cheap and weird because it's 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 you're representing something that is, but the amount of effort that you put into it and the amount yeah. of like it, it makes it valuable. You know what I mean? So essentially wow that's weird i've never said that before but that fucking makes sense <laughs> like, <laughs> like, we're having like because, awakenings well no because it looks because it, it functionally it looks like something cheap but because of the amount of effort that it's been put into it it makes it expensive in a way yeah. or like you know and and what's in it um and i completely lost myself but uh second series second series yeah no the figure great and yeah that's it's what it I love this one. Yeah, this was all my. Uh, this is the first one where, where my cult and religious figures, and I know Dove said like, no bad mouth, but he he loves saying it's saints and sinners, saints and sinners. It, it, it's not in my head. It's not necessarily saints and sinners. In my head, it was, and he knows this too. I think he was just placating the audience. Yeah, my whole thing was I wanted to use the same figure for people who are religious leaders and cult leaders, because in my mind, there's no difference. Yeah. <laughs> in my head, it's like the biggest cult in the world is Christianity. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it's no different than, you know, um, any like Scientology or any of these other, ter like it's all, I, I don't want to, you know what I mean? I, I don't, don't want to know it. Well, it's all bullshit. There is no God. It's all fucking people like, you know, just pretending, you know, that they, it's all fake and yeah. it's all a way to control people and it's all a manipulation. And I, I understand that not believing in God is like kind of a, um, no, not a taboo. It's more of a um, uh, luxury. It's a luxury. It, it's something that only, certain people can have because some people need it you know I, I understand the function of religion for certain people um I, they're just people i don't necessarily want to be my friends <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. <laughs> not i'm so you know what i mean like you're yeah. cool cool people but it's just i i'm i don't i don't yeah it's just not for me and i think of it as absolute bullshit and i, I can't believe why i didn't believe it but um, that was, that was the whole function of the first series. It was like, there's no difference. And mm -hmm. Dove kept pushing like, you know, saints and sinners. And I was like, well, really, it's all just fucking, I just want, if you could just call the whole series shit and I would have been happy. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And the next one was drink the ghoul aid. Or not, the next one was a few ghoul men. And essentially that was just that there's no like right side of history. Right. Yeah. It's like, everyone's just killing each other and like you know it's like history is written by the winners who fucking like it's all bullshit yeah. like you know you go to war you're a fucking piece of shit like it was very anti-military honestly mm. and i hate to say that but you know whatever it's not really my thing i'm not really into the military i'm not really into people who want to be in the military yeah. <laughs> you can you i don't care if you keep this in it's whatever it's just not for me i think again religion not believing in religion is like a luxury the same way as not having to join the religion join the military is a luxury you know yeah. it's like there's a certain type of person who does it and it's usually people who have to so yeah. it's whatever um so again there was that so many people are gonna hate me this <laughs> i love that i don't care man i, I really don't fucking care you but, produce but, but, these right yes, I produce, and yeah, you yeah. have done the paintings and the toys and mm -hmm. dove has sold these and this doesn't even include the ones that you sell in your shop right like that, we, that doesn't even include the ones that you do on your own it doesn't include any of those correct oh yeah no no no, no dude i so these are not the the I mean, on top of the DKE series, I've done series for I mean, technically I did one like bananas. I, I, I yeah. yanked it and sold it myself um, to which was great. I got way more money, but and then I've done um, a series for Eddie 
uh, at Resin Blood at, at Toy Cantina. Mm-hmm. I did a series of seven for them. Those sold really quick. He still got a couple. And then Dustin, Dustin at E2K, he's got a bunch of my stuff. He's yeah, got a big um, run for him, right? Well, there are a few. There, uh, I did the um, we did I did the David Lynn show for him, mm-hmm. and then um, I did. Is it just and then I did a series of like famous Kentuckians for him, okay. and then and then I did the um, and then I did the uh, I just did one piece for the Twilight Zone show. No, he has like ten pieces of mine in his shop still. Yeah, um, and they're they're only seventy bucks. Like my shit, seventy five in my shop. But yeah, so if anyone wanted to get some Ghoul of Gob, definitely go to E two K. I mean. Dustin is so fucking cool and he's so nice and he's like an, and he's an artist, you know what I mean? So he understands what. So, <laughs> he, yes, he has. So, I know, so I've done, so I've done yeah. runs for him. I've done so many fucking customs. There's so yeah. many amazing people who have reached out to me and, and asked for customs. It's, it's so much fucking fun. I, I, I really love it. I love when someone hits me up and they're like, because they, I, I don't think they expect me to like, to bring them into it you know what i yeah. mean like i think they just expect me to be like okay i'm gonna do this but i'm like all right so what's up dude like what do you like what are you into yeah. like you know what is on? And, and it's a fun kind of experience like realizing what they care about what they don't, and like you know i love talking to people like i really like i i am very much like an extrovert to the fucking like extreme like to it like it's bad yeah. you know um i mean i am and then i'm also i can you know i'm all, I, i'm pretty much bipolar so i'll get into <laughs> so well just like i fucking hate everyone but essentially if you reach out i want to talk to you and i, yeah. I want to know who you are and i want to know what you care about and we're going to have a fun time making a piece because it's not just going to be me it's going to be you and me and and it's funny that is what i do right like i know i kind of touch on these extreme subjects and i try to like you know but that's what I like to make fun of. That's what I like to make light of. Like, I, I, am, I am laughing hardest when, like, we're joking about something we shouldn't be joking about. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like, things that people are like, oh, you can't say that. I love, I fucking relish that. Like, that's why I, you I, say I, it. No, but I love it. And, like, a lot of people will, will take it as, oh, you can't, like, listen, the times have changed and all that. But it's like... I'm not trying to say I'm like racist or any of these things. It's just I I love I love I don't know. I just I like people who say fuck you and and it's fun to say fuck you about like language and stuff. And it's and it's, yeah. it's, it's it's like that's what that's what's funny to me. It's like I, I I really like it when people get offended, and I really like it when you know people are mad. Like it yeah. means you win. You're mad. I win. It's it's like that Takeshi Six Nine bullshit. Yep. <laughs> you mad? Hey, it's so fucking lame that I said that, but like it's it's that's when I'm happiest is when I'm pissing yeah. someone off and like I'm laughing about it. It's really it's fucked up. Like it's a bad thing. It's not it shouldn't be like that. But yeah, I'm I'm an immature piece of shit. So what can I say? And that's that's essentially what I do with all my pieces. It's like what am I gonna do? I'm gonna fucking hey. So I got some good ones. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the question I'm most interested in because I see that the progression of your art career has changed dramatically, mm-hmm. right? So you were really good at uh, doing drawings and that type of stuff, and then all of a sudden it shifted to the type of drawing you're doing, like you're, and then casting and molding and and breaking into all kinds of stuff. No, and- the, the drawing, the drawing has changed, like specifically. Uh, uh, please, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> I know, I know. So I here, here's the question then. Where is Ghoul of Gaba as an artist headed, let's say, in the next year? Where do you oh, see, Ghoul, like, what no, do you no, see Ghoul's, happening with your stuff? Ghoul, Ghoul is 100% going to take the, uh, like, the Barbarian Rage route, where I, I want to show how many different, um, you know, like, orifices i can fuck in this okay. like art thing you know what i mean so it's like comment i want to sh- well no no as in like i want to show that not only can i draw i can sculpt not only okay. can i paint like this bullshit cartoony tattooy shit yeah. but i can paint realistically you know what i mean like seriously i want to i want to be seen as um just uh, an all-around capable artist 
the same way Scott Cherry is. Like yeah. really, uh, absolutely. Like he he is the person. Like there there were other people I was looking up to before, like Suck Lord and um and Suck Lord and Suck Lord. Yeah. But right now, Barbarian Rage is my trajectory. Like I want to be Scott. Um, <laughs> yeah. I wanna I wanna I wanna fucking kill him wear his skin I, I probably need a few of them so i'll have to kill adam too <laughs> so i can get like the twins thing yeah. so i will become adam and scott and dude, actually that's funny <laughs> he does have a twin so i totally could that's get a, a good suit out of both him. of those kids. yeah absolutely I, i'll do that'd be so good like just just like i'll take the biggie smalls figure i have now it's and just like stitched. sculpt and no i'll just sculpt some like two like heads of like, the oh, jerry yeah. brothers Oh, let's go. Keep this in. I want him to hear this. <laughs> uh, well, what's funny is when you bring that up, I, so I, uh, Barbarian Rage is, he keeps to himself, right? So I like the you way. You have that, to fucking hit him up. He is I, the will, greatest I, artist will, I will, I will, I will. Okay, 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 you okay, okay, really okay, 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 okay. <laughs> I know. So I, uh, I, I noticed that he keeps to himself. And then when you see him at DKE Con, but if you're not ingrained in the scene, he isn't an artist that you always see. Why? I don't know. But he produces some of the best stuff I've ever seen in my life, right? And then I saw him produce for uh, E2K's Twilight Show. Oh, yeah. The, the, it, that so felt it's on. Insane. It's on Velvet. It's on Velvet. And that, that, it's like, I don't think you understand, like, the conceptualization. Like, it's not just an amazing painting. And the reason why it fits into this bootleg scene is because he's literally taking something like from that era that has been lost like mm -hmm. velvet paintings are so like the only time you ever see it is when you watch the shining and scatman carruthers is getting the call from danny while he's watching tv and he's got this two naked chicks on the wall right those are velvet paintings like, <laughs> it's like oh. that's that's what i had to like recall i was like oh fuck velvet paintings like it's only those movies. It's like the, the, uh, there's that movie about like the weird Tarzan dude in, in the city in New York in the seventies whose mom gets like eaten by rats. And there's like a bunch of drug dealers like like things they show, and they all have velvet paintings. It's like this weird seedy kind of artwork from like from like the seventies and eighties. Yeah, and he turned it and like it's so perfect because he's throwing an actual beautiful image on it. And it's like, it's so, it's so with us because what we're doing is like dirty and bootleggy and you know, yeah. that shit, but it's also beautiful. So essentially that's what he was doing. And that's what he does. Like he's a velvet. He likes painting on velvet. It's just what he does. It's yeah, I know we're talking a lot about Scott. Fuck Scott. Fuck you, Scott. <laughs> so we know. So by looking at him, I we can see that like that's where you're because you you want to be so spread out like that. This like, is very recent. This is very recent. This is very okay. recent that I I'm looking up Scott. But I the more that I, we I mean we talked a little bit before this and we'll make it in here. But we talked about the old heads and I think that yeah, yeah, yeah. the old heads are just like the dynamic is shifting. But when you talk about Scott and the way that I view, I don't know him personally. But from the outside, the way that I view Barbarian Rage, it is someone who is able to quickly pivot and keep up so that he's not left behind. The last part of this podcast is about you. Do you have, I do have a new series. It's a furry piece run. It's called Ghoul's Chain Gang Bang. Um, okay. It, 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 there was a tall up between that and Sex Cells, but Sex Cells as in spelled like C-E-L-L, -L, like cell, like a prison yeah. cell. Um, but chain gangbang one, you know, just because I just I decided it did. Um, so it's a series of thirty celebrity mug shots. Um, okay. They are all amazing. Um, Dove and is probably going to buy ten you've of them. Included themselves. some surprises in there. Well, uh, dude, that's the whole thing. I, I never know how to advertise these things. Like I just fucking like as soon as like October, I'm just like throwing them out. And I, I don't know if it's better if I like keep them away so people don't know what they are, and then. I will tell you this. There is something special about this series. I've decided to hand paint um, the first and the fifth of every series. So, like, I'm going to do the first figure is going to be hand painted. The fifth is going to be hand painted. The 10th, the 15th, you know, yada, yada, yada. Okay. Um, just, just to make something a little different, just to give people maybe a little more reason to cop one. I don't really know. And also, it's the fact that I – got fucking hammered with the deadlines and <laughs> I can't paint every figure and I already have one paint. Yeah. Um, but listen, 
again, I am not someone who needs to be advertised. Yes, I, I would like more followers, but um, I really, I just want to, like, my friends, my friends are the best. My, my whole crew, like, I love these guys so much. Like, Resin Blood, seriously, Plague Dearth, Hella Radicals, um, Trash Can Monster, Cronin Builder, Matashi, and, like, all these guys are yeah. they're so fucking awesome. And they're so fun and nice. And really, like, I know... I know we're selling artwork, but essentially I think what it comes down to is you're selling yourself. And yeah. for the most part, people who buy our stuff, they, they really just want to be a part of our world and not necessarily and, – and buying a piece of us is, is you know, essentially their way of doing that. And I, I, I know that I've, I've made great relationships with people just by buying things and, like, talking to them. And I don't know, man. Like, let's just have some fun. Like, there are a lot of assholes in this community. There are a lot of people who – have no senses of humor and you know take things seriously and want to cause drama and all this shit. But you know, if you're cool and you're funny and you know, you can hang, then hit hit me up and <laughs> let's make some fucking art. You know what I mean? That's really all it, <laughs> it's all there you it go. is. I'm just so sick of these fucking people who literally yeah. If you can hang, hit me up and we'll, we'll chill. That's <laughs> how we're ending the episode right there. If you can hang, hit me up. Cool. Thank you for being on Toys on Tap. You, you. Don't be a stranger, you putz. Toys on Tap. Toys on Tap. Next episode. The next episode. It's great. It's amazing. You're going to want to listen to it. It's not right now, though. You're going to have to wait till the next episode to listen to it. Oh, when's that? The next one. Cool. Toys on Tap. Toys on Tap. The next one's going to be good, too. So stay tuned and, and, and listen to that. Toys on Tap. Awesome.